I've now got the great, great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Stefano Boeri, a Milan-based architect who is at the moment currently the Municipal Council for Culture in Milan. The list of his activities is very long. We are here back to David Deutsch when he says the 21st century is about these parallel realities. Stefano was the editor-in-chief of the international magazines Abitare and Domus and has always edited magazines. He's also a professor and very influential teacher, a professor of urban design at the Politecnico in Milan, uh, a visiting professor at Strelka in Moscow, a visiting professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Design uh, in the US. Um, and of course, and foremost, and above all, he's an architect and an urbanist. Um, last week, actually, there was global press for his 27-story uh, Bosco Verticale in Milan, which is a vision, actually, for a first uh, vertical forest. And then, uh, in addition, he's also the founder of Multiplicity, which is an international research network dedicated to the study of urban transformation. He's the author of many books, such as Uncertain States of Europe, Cronaca dell'Abitare. He will today speak about the planetary kitchen garden. A very, very warm welcome to Stefano Boeri. Uh, doubts, doubts make good politics. And uh, during my profession as an architect and as an editor-in-chief of magazines, I have been always, let me say, touch, uh, disturbed and touched and uh, excited by doubts. But when I, since I started to enter in politics, uh, doubts are always with me. And uh, for the reason I asked to the new editor-in-chief of one of the magazines that I've run in the last years, Mario Piazza from Abitare, to to put on, on his uh, first issue a series of doubts related with uh, ecology or related with the concept of a sustainable city. Uh, the first doubt is about uh, the possibility of a city dweller to work as a woodcutter. And when, uh, when you enter in politics, what normally happens is that you are, cannot forget your past, but you are trying to translate your experience and to text your concept and your idea and your passions into a new dimension. So for instance, what I'm now doing is trying to understand is what we have done together with Jacques Herzog, Ricky Bardet, and William McDonough in order to promote uh, the Expo 2015 in Milano which has as a title, the title, Feeding the Planet, Energy for Life. So I'm now trying to, to, to understand is what we have proposed for the Expo is still relevant in a political dimension. What we have done, we, 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 we had the, the idea to completely change the format of the Universal Exposition. Instead of hosting a series of national pavilion, uh, the idea in this case is to ask the countries, all the countries of the world, to come in Milano in 2015, and we will give them a piece of land, and they will simply cultivate this piece of land, showing how they can transform agricultural products into food. So that is a very drastic uh, switch in the normal concept of an universal exposition, and that uh, is exactly what we are now trying to keep as one of the main content of the new left-wing administration uh, in Milano. So if you want, is the idea of uh, an expo who will stay also after the exhibition and who will give to the future citizens of Milano the idea that there is a possibility to develop around the city a new dimension of agriculture, a sort of planetary botanic kitchen garden who can also, in a way, uh, represent the multitude of different cultures, traditions, which are nowadays inhabiting our cities. Second question, second doubt, is about the possibility to, to think to the presence of secret gardens. So some years ago, always in Milano, we promoted, we were a group of researchers and architects, the idea of uh, let the circular forest, a ring, of forests and trees around Milano, like six millions of trees, and we started to, to, to put in reality this, this project. And what we are now doing as an administration, we are like trying to, to transform 
all this in reality. And uh, because we don't have money, because one of the points of uh, to run public policies in Europe at the moment is that public policy doesn't have money enough to uh, transform in reality our contract, our promises. Now the point is we have to uh, put our perspective into the sphere of the demand and not into the sphere of the offer. So we are now working with uh, farmers, we are working with local administration, small municipalities, uh, agricultural farmers, in order to convince them of the opportunity to really transform the surrounding in Milano into a continuous ring of trees. Third question is about uh, sustainable design and, uh, and the form of sustainable design. So from this point of view, I think uh, uh, we are developing an idea which is in a way uh, quite radical. And this idea is to imagine to have a continuous cycle from forest to the production of wood um, panels, prefabricated wood panels, to social housing, and again, to forest. And I think that this idea of a continuous cycle, which is in a certain way the best way to uh, translate into politics the notion of sustainability, is something which can really be realized. And uh, it has a lot of advantages in terms of promoting a, a new market for social housing in our, in our cities. Uh, another question, another doubt, it's about the, the subject, the author of our uh, new, let me say, green or ecological environments, because I think what is interesting is to see uh, how many uh, different uh, formal subjects are competing sometimes or collaborating at the time to produce uh, some serious jumps, serious uh, improvement in the uh, quality of our urban environment. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, that's something that I started to do with my multiplicity research group uh, 10 years ago, and now it's part of, our, of the program of the, our administration, is to work with the idea that in order to, let me say, to recuperate uh, huge industrial abandoned areas, uh, one of the best uh, way to start, to imagine to have a gradual process of restoration, is simply to use them like place for a uh, botanic cleanup process. And that's one of the unique way or the unique tools we have nowadays to deal with such a, a large abandoned environments and to transform it in a landscape. We have a, a different relation with the citizenship. And uh, again, uh, one of the most relevant point of our politics in Milano is how can we really uh, relaunch the presence of a series of uh, local farms, local farm courtyards. We have like uh, 70 local farm courtyards around Milano, but this is something which happens basically in all the European cities. And uh, we are now working uh, seriously in order to transform this local house, this peripheral ring of agricultural uh, buildings into the new epicenters of our polity, so in the new centers of the new Milano. So uh, the idea is that this epicenter will be the center of uh, an exchange between uh, the production, the agricultural production, which happens around Milano, and the, uh, the request of food, of a new kind of food, of a transparent process to produce food, we come from the citizens of our city. I think this is a something which is really crucial in uh, our uh, uh, politics. And then, that's a question, it's a doubt, it's a technical doubt, but it's also a political doubt. So this gets back me to what Hans was saying uh, five minutes ago about the project we have, we are now developing, which is a serious project, it's a, at the same time, a, a dangerous project and uh, extremely exciting. So the idea is to try to have uh, in the center of the city, uh, towers who can really uh, keep without, within them um, a, a, a large number of trees. So in this case, our two towers that we are constructing in Milano, in the center of Milano, with uh, 1,300 trees. And uh, 
if you want the concept uh, would stand at the beginning of this uh, of this project is that uh, thanks to this strange uh, relation between uh, a tower a skyscraper and a, a garden environment we could imagine that uh, instead of five hectares of single family houses in the country uh, in the countryside sorry we could concentrate and densify a new relation between urban environment and garden environment in the center of uh, our city on one side and the other side uh, we could think to, to have into the city the presence of hectares of trees in this case this is related the number of trees we have we will have in this tower is more or less related comparable to one hectare of uh, forest and this is more or less what we are doing in milano this are a place around milano where we are cultivating the trees where we put them thanks so much for your attention <laughs> <laughs>